Hi everybody. Looks like we had a little bit longer weekend than we thought we were going to have. Uh, I'm going to try to do the best I can to get everybody caught up on what we were doing before our unexpected nine day break. And I'm going to look at some of the topics from section 7.3, try to help you get a little bit of a start into that section. Uh, it's not one of the easier sections we've worked with, but I think with the examples I'll show you, you'll be able to do relatively well with it. So first of all, as a quick review, if you remember, we were working with functions uh, maybe like this. We might have some type of situation where we had a rate of change of a function that was directly proportional to the function. Um, the whole idea here, of course, the rate of change of a function is really just the derivative of that function. Uh, so we're saying that the derivative, maybe something like dy dx, some of these problems, maybe it was like a dp dt or, or some rate with respect to time, but in a general sense, dy dx. Uh, the rate of change of the function is directly proportional to the function. In other words, that function value, y, is getting multiplied by some kind of a constant. So maybe write that in the form of dy dx equals ky. Now to solve this, the challenge is you've got a y variable over on this side of the equation. Uh, we've got to do what's called separating variables to try to get the different parts of that equation set up in a way so that we can solve it. So to solve this, uh, we first of all take both sides of this equation and we can multiply by dx. And that's going to get the dx's off the left side altogether. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to try to get the y onto the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by y. I'm going to divide this side by y. Of course, that'll cancel the y's. Uh, over on this side, you could do dy divided by y. You might want to just write that as 1 over y on the other side. Uh, so what you end up with here is 1 over y dy equals k dx. And now, I just have x variables on one side of the equation. I've got y variables on the other side. If I've got two equal values, I can take the integral of both sides. We know that the integral of 1 over y is just the natural log of the absolute value of y. Technically plus a constant, but I'm going to take care of the constant a little bit later. Um, on the other side of the equation, the integral is going to be kx. And I need a plus c somewhere. Really, you're moving both constants over to the same side of the equation, and you have a plus c. Okay? Super important that you remember that constant there, or nothing in these problems is going to work out correctly. All right? Uh, at this point, we can start trying to solve for the y variable. Um, some people use those two equal values, and they take e to the left and right hand side powers. Uh, I prefer just to convert this over into log form. Uh, the natural log is the same thing as the log base e. And so you have a base of e. You have an exponent of kx plus c. And that's at equal to the absolute value of y. Now, the other thing, with the absolute value of y, if I want to get rid of that absolute value, remember I can set it equal to the positive or the negative value of y since we don't know what the sign of y is. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, that's going to be plus or minus. Uh, now, a little sleight of hand here. At this point, I know that if I multiply values with the same base, I can add the exponents. So I can also take this and I can break it apart as a product of two values, both with the base of e, and break up that exponent. So I can write that as plus or minus e to the kx times e to the c. Okay, Same base, we multiply, we add exponents, that's the same thing. And that equals y. Uh, now, usually we do some kind of substitution at this point. Uh, we've got this e to the c. It can be positive or negative. Uh, so we'll say something like plus or minus e to the c is going to equal, we call it C1, or we could call it C0. I happen to know in this case it's going to be the initial value, the way these problems work out. So I'm going to call it a C0. And we can do a little substitution here. And the final equation is going to be that y is equal to, uh, you're going to have a C0 in place of this thing right here, times e to the k2. All right, so that's your basic setup there. Okay. 
hopefully that doesn't look too bad. Hopefully that kind of reminds everybody of how these problems worked out. Of course, that's really just the same thing as the PERT formula. In section 7.3, the game is going to change. And it's going to change pretty significantly, although I don't think the problems are actually as hard. But you need to be aware of the fact that most of the time in these problems, you are not going to get things that end up working out to be the PERT formula. You're going to get equations that look like all kinds of different equations. They won't be very predictable. However, I think you'll find the algebra and the calculus very often is going to be, to be a little bit easier than what you saw in this example here. So uh, let me take a look at the first example. Um, you might be given something like dy dx is equal to 9x squared over 4y. And there are all kinds of different things they can ask you. Uh, for example, they can ask you the slope at the point 1 comma 2. Okay? Keep in mind, this already is an equation for a slope. And so you could substitute in 1 and 2, and that would give you the slope at the point 1 comma 2. Okay? It's called a differential equation. Um, at the same time, I can ask you to do all kinds of other things. Uh, for example, I could ask you to find I can ask you to solve for the particular equation. If the point 2, 5 is a point on the graph of y. Okay, so this is going to work very much like what we had with the first example problem, except we don't necessarily know that it's going to come out looking like a PERT problem. And that's the place where you can get yourself in trouble. So be careful. No guarantee that that's going to happen. I'm going to start out the same way. I need to get the x variables on one side of the equation, including the dx. I need to get the y variables on the other side of the equation, including the dy. Um, different ways you can do this. You could cross multiply. You would get 4y dy equals 9x squared dx. Uh, you're not always guaranteed that's going to happen. It just works in this case because the y was in the denominator and the x was in the numerator. So I'm not going to cross multiply, although if you want to cross multiply, that's great. It'll work out fine in this problem. Um, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 4y. By the way, remember, everything has to be either multiplied uh, or divided to move things around here. Uh, so be careful. You're not adding or subtracting anything in these equations. Uh, so the y's cancel on this side. Uh, we're going to get uh, 4y over on this side. Now, I also need to multiply both sides by dx to get rid of the dx on this side of the equation and to get a dx over on that side of the equation. So let's take a look at what I ended up with here. Uh, I ended up with 4y dy over on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to end up with 9x squared dx. All right? So, what do I need to do at this point? Well, I've got two equal values. I've got these differentials as part of both of those expressions. I don't really want to have those in there. So I'm going to take the integral of both sides. I have two equal things. I should get two equal integrals. Okay? So far, this is, it, this is exactly like the first example I did. This is where the game changes a little bit because these are much easier integrals to take than what I was doing in the first set of problems. So over here, I'm going to get a 2y squared. Over on this side, I'm going to get a 3x cubed. Okay? Somewhere in here, I need a plus c. Technically, uh, there's a plus c on this side and there's a plus c on that side, two different c's. Usually, we just kind of move those two constants over to the same side. Wouldn't be terrible to have a C1 and a C2 and then say that uh, your C variable is equal to C1 minus C2 or something like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, and put the plus C there. Super important. If you miss the plus C, you're probably not going to be able to solve these problems after this point. So really, really, really important. All right? It's also very easy to miss that step. All right? Depending on what you're trying to do here, you may have to solve for the y variable. Um, in this case, if I divided both sides by 2 and took the square root, uh, that would allow me to solve for the, the y variable. Or 
um, you may not be asked to solve for anything. It really just depends on the situation. Um, in this case, we have the point 0.25, that's a point on this graph. And so that means when x is 2, y has to be 5. I can go ahead and substitute in now. A lot of times it's going to be easier to do your substitution before you solve for a particular variable. I just don't have to deal with all the radicals and fractions and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to substitute right in here. Uh, that's going to be 2 times 5 squared is equal to 3 times 2 cubed plus c. Okay, 5 squared is 25. And it's going to be 50 over on this side. 2 cubed is 8. It's going to be 24 plus C. Uh, C is going to end up equaling 26. All right, so the final equation here, again, depending on what form we want to write it in, is going to be that 2Y squared is equal to 3X cubed plus 26 was my C value. If you do want to solve for Y, I can divide everything by 2. That's going to be the y squared is equal to 3 halves x cubed plus 13. Um, then I could take the square root of both sides. Remember, there's a positive and a negative square root. And that's going to give me that y is equal to the positive or negative square root of 3 halves x cubed plus 13. Again, you may not be asked to take it to that final form uh, and answer like the original equation that I had there, could be completely fine. You're just going to have to look at the particular problem and see what form they want you to leave it in. But that's the basic approach. Now, to uh, take a look at one final example, just to make the point, these are going to look different every single time. And you need to expect that these are not just going to show up looking like per problems. You'll notice there wasn't an E in my last example. right? Here's another one that also will not have an E in it. Uh, so again, you might be given some kind of equation like dy dx equals 4xy squared. Uh, this time I'm not going to be able to cross multiply to get the variables on both, um, both on the same side. Or on the correct side, I suppose. Um, but basically I need to get rid of the y on this side. Again, we're not subtracting. It's got to be multiplication or division. Uh, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx here, just to get the ball rolling. So I've got dy equals 4xy squared dx. The y is on the wrong side, so I need to divide both sides by y squared. All right? You probably don't want to write this as dy over y squared. You're probably going to want to write that as 1 over y squared dy equals or x dx. Even better, because we're going to be taking the integral in a minute, remember that 1 over y squared is a 1 over y squared, not 1 over y. The antiderivative of this is not going to be a natural log function. You may want to go ahead and write this value here as a natural log. And, or I'm sorry, not as a natural log. You may want to go ahead and write this with negative exponents. That's the same thing as y to the negative 2 dy equals 4x dx. I can take the integral of both sides, and I just need to be careful. The power is going to raise by 1. I'm going to divide by that new power. That's going to be a negative y to the negative 1 is equal to 2x squared. Again, you've got to have a constant here. Technically, there's a constant on both sides, but I can move them together on the same side. I can put a plus c right there. Okay? A couple things. Probably don't want to have negative exponents after you've done the power rule. I would write that as negative 1 over y equals 2x squared plus c. You may give, be given an x and y value that work in the function. You might have to substitute those in to find a particular solution for the function. Um, in this case, I didn't give you that. I'm just asking you for a general solution. Um, they may want you to solve for y. Uh, if they do, good idea here might be to multiply both sides of this equation by y. Make sure you've got parentheses there. And I'm going to end up with negative 1 is equal to 2x squared plus c, all of that multiplied by y. Um, at this point, if I want to solve for y, I can divide both sides by 2x squared plus c. And y would be equal to negative 2x squared, well, negative 1 over 2x squared plus c. 
okay? So again, you're not getting anything that looks like a PERT formula. You don't even have an E in your final equation. So be careful, don't assume that every single problem is going to involve an E because it's probably not. Uh, but if you're very careful, you multiply and divide to get the X's on one side, Y's on the other side, separation of variables can work out really nicely for these problems. Most of these should be a little bit easier to work with than what you saw in section 7.2.